Hi, this is Harry from Biofeedback Resources International, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about skin conductance sensors. Um, these are sensors that are used with the Thought Technology Biograph uh, ProComp Infinity system, and this is the skin conductance amplifier. It has two snap connector sensors on the on here so that snaps off and it goes into this velcro band now this happens to be the thought technology equipment but uh, many other instruments use similar types of sensors so you have the snap on one side that uh, snaps in here and then on the other side you have a silver silver chloride electrode or sensor. Now this then snaps into the cable and it wraps around the finger after you apply some conductive cream or gel. Now the thing that I wanted to point out is how people tend to use these and some mistakes that could be avoided. So it used to be that uh, with the BCIA certification process you would have a practicum so you take your written exam and then you also had a practicum where you would have to use the instruments in front of a uh, person who would be um, uh, part of the, the testing uh, experience or process and they would make sure that you knew how to use the equipment properly that's not done anymore and now they use the mentors to make sure that people know how to use the equipment. So this is something that uh, a mentor might uh, go over with you as to how to properly use these sensors. So what some people will do is they'll take the cream or gel, the conductive, and they put a glob of it right on the surface of, of the sensor. And I don't like to do that one because first of all you don't need that much uh, usually people tend to put too much and so when they put the sensor then on the person's finger the the cream or gel that they put on would then spread out and get all over the the velcro material and it makes a, a mess of it and it makes it harder to to clean and it's really not necessary to have that much of the conductive gel or cream <clears throat> in order to get a, uh, a good reading. So what I usually do is I'll just take a little bit of the gel and so like this amount and I'll just rub that directly onto the person's fingers and you really can't even see it. Then I'll put the sensors on and you want to put these on so that they're snug but they're not uncomfortably tight so it shouldn't be uncomfortable it shouldn't be pulsing and um, affecting blood flow now some of these velcro bands are, are very long and it may be difficult to put them on a person that has small fingers so one of the things that you can do if the velcro bands are too long as you can cut them just take a pair of scissors and cut them and they'll fit easier on small fingers now of course you may have some people that come in that have big fingers so ideally you just get an extra set of these these usually don't cost too much um, this particular kind is fifteen dollars for a set of two and um, so you keep an extra set one that's a long set and one that's a short set now, the other thing that uh, you should know about these is they don't last forever. The, this is the same type, of uh, same type of sensor that is on the disposable electrodes that you might use um, for surface EMG. And so the, the, the ba there's a base metal here, and it's covered with a silver-silver chloride coating. That coating will get worn away over time. 
So as you put the cream on the sensors and you wipe it off and hopefully you are uh, cleaning these after you use it with a person. Um, you know, I've been in some offices where I've seen a big buildup of the, the hardened uh, cream or gel, uh, which it starts to look really disgusting when that happens. But after each use, you really should be cleaning these. What you can clean them with, uh, you can use um, a cloth with some warm soapy water and just wipe them down with that. Some people prefer to use alcohol and you can wipe it down with that. The more, uh, the, the stronger the type of solution you use when you clean them, the, the quicker that silver, silver chloride surface is going to wipe off. So when that silver, silver chloride surface is gone, then the, the electrodes really should be replaced and they're not going to be as accurate. Um, you can notice by the coloration. So the silver, silver chloride has a darker gray color. When it wears off, the color becomes lighter so you'll see more of like a silvery type of color that means that the coating is worn off they'll still work but they're not going to be as accurate or as sensitive um, the other thing that you can do is you don't have to use these velcro bands if you don't want to use these because you don't want to deal with cleaning you'd rather use something that you can throw away you can take these off and you can replace it with a type of uh, disposable sensor that we would normally use for EMG and you snap these on so of course you're going to use two of them and you snap that on and then when you peel this off you would either stick it on the fingers so you can have them on the fingers or if you prefer you can put them on the palms so you just have them two side by side on the palms that could be useful if you have the person doing something where they need to have their fingers available uh, or there could be other reasons why maybe someone has a cut on their finger or something like that where you want to avoid using the fingers and there's been some situations where you know if you're working with a population that um, may have some uh, transmittable um, issues uh, going on where you don't want to share things uh, like these reusable sensors uh, from person to person, you can do that. Another thing you might clean these are uh, clean these with would be something like a, a Lysol type of uh, uh, cleaner uh, that uh, will kind of disinfect it. All right, so that is uh, the tip on these. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, as far as the the sensors wearing off, the manufacturer says that these should be replaced, not the whole thing, but this part should be replaced after 50 uses. Now, I don't really know anybody who has a, uh, a chart where they mark off you know, how many uses, 23, 24, 25, and so on, so they know exactly when it's 50 uses. I usually go by the coloration of the uh, sensor itself. So when it gets to be uh, a lighter color, and I can see that the, the coating is worn off, then that's when I would tend to replace them. Or if they start to act funny, I would replace them then. All right, so that's the, your uh, tip on skin conductance sensors, and that is something that, you know, if you are learning biofeedback uh, and you're working with a, a BCIA certification um, mentor, uh, they should talk to you about some things like that, and, and uh, there's other simple tips that I'll go over in, in other videos to explain some of the things that you want to look for. And there's some things that are very simple that we run into when we're doing biofeedback that, you know, if you don't know, it, they, they can cause uh, problems, uh, but they can also be solved pretty easily. All right, so again, skin conducting sensors, uh, they've got the Velcro bands, and you can also use the same type of sensors you'd use for EMG, either on the palm or st uh, sticking them on the fingers, the uh, disposable sensors. If you have any questions uh, about any of the stuff that I said about skin conductance sensors, you can uh, give me a call. The phone number in the office is 914-762-4646. You can also send me an email at harry at biofeedbackinternational.com or you can uh, visit our website and uh, leave uh, a comment there. The website is biofeedbackinternational.com. Also, please subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. There's uh, lots of other videos there and we'll continue to uh, post 
new ones. Also visit us on our Facebook page, Biofeedback Resources. Thanks. See you next time.